National Exit Test. It is one of the hottest as well as the trending topic these days in the medical field. So we got the latest uh, proposal from the National Medical Council, that is the National Board of Examinations, regarding what might be the guidelines for the National Exit Test. Now we all know that it is a licensure exam and there are so many videos which are floating in the YouTube explaining about what is the pattern of the exam, how many number of questions are going to be there, how many parts it has been divided into. Everything is at the proposal stage itself. We don't have any kind of a concrete evidence from the government stating that this is what is going to be in 2022. Okay, as per the proposal, most likely there might be the same scenario what is actually floating around. There might be the same thing what you will see in 2022. So my explanation in this video, I'm not going to explain about uh, what is the pattern of the exam, how many questions are going to come, how many steps are there. So many people already have made such kind of a video. But what I will tell over here is what is your general approach and what should be your preparatory plan for national exit test. This is especially intended for the students who join med school in 2017 because they are the one who are going to write the national exit test for the first time. And also if the students are of 2016 batch, if they have like supplies or if the dropout students, they also have to write the same national exit test by 2022. And the foreign medical graduates also comes under the same category here. Everyone will write the national exit test by 2022. And we already know the experience of the latest NEET PG as well as the FMG exam. They just gave a tinge what's going to come in the future, what will be the future of the medical education in India. They already gave hints. The most important thing is, as per the next guidelines, there will be integration of the subjects, that is vertical as well as horizontal integration of the subjects like medicine as well as allied subjects, obstetrics and gynecology and allied subjects, surgery as well as allied subjects. So overall, what is changed here? Everyone are now talking about concepts, integration, rote learning is not going to work, one-liners are not going to work. Everyone are speaking the same language these days. What is changed is only the exam pattern. Other than the exam pattern, nothing has been changed. Which means what? As an MBBS student or as an MBBS graduate, you must know all the 19 subjects to become a doctor. Because as a doctor, which is a profession, you need to know your subject irrespective of whether you are going to write the national exit test or USMLE or PLAB or Australian Medical Council, they are the different types of exams. But the knowledge, the core concept will be the same. So I believed this from so many years because whenever I used to teach biochemistry or anatomy, I always used to teach in detail with the concepts. And many of the students as well as some of the faculty also criticized that this is not important and that is not important. But I never believed regarding what is important and what not. I always believed in building concepts and integrating those concepts with the clinicals or integrating those concepts with the practice based evidence. This is what is actually required as a good doctor. That is what the national exit exam is going to be expecting from you as a medical student or as a graduate, irrespective of where you studied. It's not going to be the matter anymore. You might be a foreign medical graduate or maybe an Indian graduate. Now everyone is going to fall in the same bucket, right? So the approach is the Robins is not going to change their curriculum because next is coming. All the international standardized books will remain same because they are the international books. They will give you concepts. 
they will give you the knowledge what you should know as a doctor it will never ever change whatever may be the exam pattern maybe it will never ever change but now because of this national exit test i will be very much thankful to the government here because till now everyone studied like a subject like a rote learning methodology so very less likely many of the students applied those basic concepts into clinical scenarios so now as per the exam many were saying that 10% is going to come from the basic sciences as well as majority is going to come from the clinicals so everyone are saying that basic sciences will be approximately 10% and majority will be from the clinicals so whenever we talk about the medicine as well as allied subjects so to understand the internal medicine don't you think it is important to know what is the anatomy physiology biochemistry pathology pharmacology and microbiology until or unless you know these concepts really well you cannot understand the disease process pathophysiology or the management plans what you are going to study in the internal medicine and whenever we are talking about integration of the subjects and whenever we talk about a clinical aspects even from the basic sciences you clearly cannot differentiate that this is an anatomy question or this is a biochemistry question or this is a physiology question the best example i will tell you i have a topic called as glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency g6pd so whenever i talk about this disease will you say this disease is related to the biochemistry or hematology or internal medicine or pathology what will you say so we never studied g6pd in detail in biochemistry till now we just studied about uh, hexose monophosphate shunt where we studied about it is a rate limiting step and we studied that this is the step where nadph is produced but whatever the knowledge you know about hmp pathway is very much required and you have to apply that knowledge in the pathology or in the internal medicine how this hmp pathway is going to be linked with the production of nadph in the rbc and how the symptomatology will be what will be the patient's uh, clinical features age of the patient race of the patient what will be the management what will be the initial diagnosis what will be the initial treatment definitive treatment this is what you have to require for every clinical aspect related to the basic sciences when i talk about the supracondylar fracture of the humerus it is actually an orthopedic related topic but you will study this in the median nerve injury also because in supracondylar fracture of the humerus the nerve which is involved is the median nerve so you you should know the course of the median nerve you also should know about the relation of the supracondylar fracture of the humerus with the applied aspects so this is how you have to start your preparation if you are a medical student who joined in your med school in 2017 or 18 or now so your preparation pattern should always be with very strong with the basics as well as concepts and once you understood those concepts how to apply those concepts into the clinical scenarios you have to do this for every chapter as well as for every topic irrespective of what subject you are studying for example if you start your preparation with anatomy as a first year medical student or fourth semester medical student when you study about uh, osteology or nerves when you study the clavicle you will come across the topic called as cleidocranial dysostosis so you have to see what exactly the case it is only about the clavicle or it is something else what they are expecting you to know when you talk about cleidocranial dysostosis so like this whatever the topic you will study from the basic sciences that is from anatomy physiology or biochemistry you should know what are all the clinical elements which are present in particular topic and how you are going to apply the same topics for the clinical cases this should be your preparatory plan don't even think about don't even concentrate about what books i have to study you have to study the same books but now your cognition will be 
in direction towards how to apply whatever the knowledge you have in the form of different dots how you are going to connect those dots to make a proper picture that is what is going to be matter in such kind of an exam if you know the material completely the exam is going to be pretty easy everyone are saying next is like a scary devil right the national exit test wants you to understand think like a clinician if the length of the question is like four lines or five lines or eight lines irrespective of that you should have a capability and capacity to pick up all the buzzwords and try to understand what the examiner wants you to think about a case this is what you have to build up starting from the anatomy till the surgery you have to apply the same concept for everything whatever you are learning so that is the reason again and again i am telling you that nothing has changed except the exam pattern even though even when neat pg was there even fmg was there the intention of a medical student should be understanding the concept with the integration you should never study for the exam you should study for the knowledge and whenever you are going to apply the knowledge for different types of exams you can easily change how to apply the learnt material for different types of exams because you have a core concept inside you the just a matter of point is how you are going to apply those facts in a clinical learning methodology that is what is going to decide between the rankers as well as the non rankers so remove all the misconceptions regarding only like uh, clinical subjects are important and basic sciences are not important as a doctor as a medical student when you are studying for four and a half or five years everything is important in terms of knowledge everything is important to understand the concept that is what you have to keep in your mind from now and many will be asking right it is a usmle kind of an exam so should we study usmle q banks see usmle is completely a different ball game even though the clinical scenarios might be the same i will agree with you but the number of hours the number of questions length of the question and number of options that differ so much when you compare with the national exit test because the questions in usmle are going to be lengthier and more lengthier that is the reason approximately 5 years before there were like almost 300 plus questions now it is like almost 280 plus questions because the number of questions keep on decreasing but the time remains the same which means the questions are becoming harder and harder and also lent here so that's the reason don't immediately go to the u world or any usmle q banks and try to learn for usmle because in u world you have only 2400 mcqs but if national exit test is going to come you will be having 540 questions do you think that all the 540 questions are going to come from these 2400 questions absolutely not they are going to ask you from new can corner of the syllabus that is the latest syllabus which is prescribed by the medical council of india that is 2019 where you can see the clear cut vertical as well as horizontal integration of the subjects so that is the reason you can read u world to understand the case scenario just to understand just to apply but it is not a main preparatory tool that is what i am going to explain so that is the reason now it is a time for each and every individual you have to focus for the latest exam pattern again i am telling you irrespective of the exam now it is well and good that the national exit test is going to come in 2022 but irrespective of what type of exam you are going to appear even for usmle or plab or amc what i tell you is concentrate on understanding the subject you cannot study whole of anatomy whole of internal medicine whole of biochemistry in 3 to 4 days humanly it is not possible until or unless you know everything you can just revise for 3 to 4 days 
but nobody can listen to the whole subject for three to four days understand revise and apply and pass the exam it is not possible guys it is not possible at all so that is the reason at least now open your eyes try to understand what is the importance of reading textbooks sitting for five to six hours each and every day understanding the concepts understanding the clinical scenarios concentrate on this from now if you are late you are going to be behind your battlefield and it is purely a competitive exam all the foreign medical graduates indian graduates everyone are going to write this national exit test now so you should be compete enough you should be very much competitive to compete with your fellow mates believe in yourself believe in the knowledge whatever you are learning believe in your hidden talents and apply very sincerely with a dedication and austerity this is what is important for you when you are trying to prepare for this national exit test